degradation of, of public services, we've seen uh, increases in uh, uh, inequalities of wealth, we've seen increases in poverty, so we've seen all these social dysfunctions arising from this agenda. And really the austerity agenda we talk about uh, in, in 2013 is just the neoliberal agenda, it's just the 2013 version of it. And so I think that really uh, it's a very important to push back against what is basically a flawed idea, it's a bad idea, and even economists worldwide have sort of, uh, they've already ruled on neoliber neoliberalism and said, guys, this, this doesn't work, it's not a good idea, and yet unfortunately our institutions institutions are still being run under this framework and so I think again more and more, more and more we need to be able to argue against that and we need the freedom to be able to speak and really just to say this is what research says, this is what science says, this is what experience says works and doesn't work. And it's a scary situation in our country where I mean with our government muzzling scientists for instance, um, with academics being muzzled, I mean who's going to ask the tough questions if not academics? Ontario currently has the highest tuition fees in the country and so students are paying more and more uh, of the cost to have uh, college and university education and not only is this harmful on an individual level because it's forcing students to take on massive amounts of debt to ensure they can finance that education but it's a bigger social problem I mean we're pushing out an entire generation of graduates who are going to be so weighed down by debt they're unable to make investments in maybe starting a new business buying a house buying a car and these are the things that are driving our economy and so what we need to be conscious of the fact is that education shouldn't be a debt sentence and that you should be able to attend post-secondary education regardless of your socioeconomic status or where you live or how much money you plan to make after you graduate. Faculty will end up losing control of the curriculum. It will end up being used in ways that they had never intended it to be used. We're here to talk about academic freedom. Faculty develop curriculum. They, they they feel an, an ownership of it, they, they live it, they breathe it, they've developed it along with input from the, the communities here in Ontario. And to, to just have that curriculum be used um, in ways that they never intended or the curriculum sold off to the highest bidder, it's not what they intended that material to be used for. Uh, well, I, I think what it does is it creates more distance between the professor and the student because no matter how hard you try, you can't recreate what you do in the classroom uh, online. It simply doesn't work that way. Uh, there are some uh, good applications of online learning. I'm not opposed to online learning. I think uh, there are cases in which uh, you could actually attract additional students through online learning. The Federation has been very clear on our stance, which is that technology in the classroom should be used to enhance the classroom experience, but never to replace it. Academic freedom is important in any educational environment. Teachers are the most knowledgeable people about the, what they're teaching and about how to teach and the material for their students. So if they don't have the freedom to teach as they think best, to assess the students as they think appropriate, the quality of education will suffer. And that applies whether you're teaching philosophy or auto mechanics. Au niveau collégial, la liberté académique, on avait, euh, par, de, par défaut, lorsque j'ai commencé, il y a pratiquement 30 ans passés, on avait le choix de choisir qu'est-ce qu'on enseignait, comment on allait enseigner, etc. De plus en plus, on est on a de la pression pour voici comment tu vas l'évaluer. Non, tu ne peux pas faire RC. Alors, on, il y a de moins en moins de liberté pour les professeurs pour décider qu'est-ce qui est mieux pour les étudiants. What we see happening in Ontario and indeed across Canada is that governments and uh, ministries or training colleges and universities here in Ontario are actually allowing and indeed encouraging the intrusions of a corporate agenda into our education system. And instead of uh, being quality education, what I see more and more is an attempt just to churn out workers that would fit some certain part of, uh, of uh, the corporate world's agenda. I find that there's direct links, and we have a lot of partnerships and we're developing them uh, with the college faculty. Uh, our sector represents uh, university fac uh, faculty and staff. And then when we talk about things like academic freedom, there's definite 
overlap in our interests and that's where we can come together and really move something forward and support each other. Si on ne fait pas attention, euh, ça ne sera pas une, une éducation publique, ça, ça va être une éducation corporative. When corporations who are, you know, represent sort of the one percent uh, are able to now dictate how you know colleges are, are going to operate, how they get more and more influence on course content, what courses are taught, uh, that's just wrong. Uh, that's not serving the people of Ontario. That's serving that one percent interest, which is just plain wrong. If you are someone who's concerned with democracy, if you're someone who's concerned with a free and functional society, you should be very concerned about academic freedom because that's where it comes back from. Academic freedom doesn't come from everyone uh, towing the line and nodding their heads in unison and not questioning. Um, you know, a healthy democracy comes from people who question, who criticize, and that's where the best ideas come out too. So as a society, people talk, it's funny, they talk about innovation and progress and change. These are big business buzzwords. Well, innovation, progress, and change come from people being able to think freely and critically and without fear that there's going to be repercussions. So I would say it's actually in everyone's best interest that we, that we have this.